Hi, my name is Steve Mann, and I'm here to present on behalf of myself and my co-authors, Zhao, Faraz, Christina, Samir, and Jaden, presenting Water HCI Part 2, Open Water Sensing, Meta-Sensing and Observing with Drones and Augmented Reality. Let me just get the picture in picture here. So, Water HCI is a field that's been around for many years. We had, last year we had the 23rd annual Water Human Computer Interface Deconference in Toronto. And this year we will be having the 24th annual conference. And Water HCI is the intersection of water, humans, and computers. So um, right at the very intersection of these three things, we have water, human, computer, interaction. So what we will cover here is intro to surveillance and autonomous watercraft, understanding water quality, goals and objectives, experimental setup procedures, testing and results. In conclusion. This is one of our test sites. This is uh, one of the beaches where we're doing our testing. This is a Woodbine Beach. And this is another beach, another of our test beaches, a Kelso Conservation Area. And this is, this is my favorite beach. This is downtown Toronto, downtown Toronto's only beach, which we call the Teach Beach, located at Ontario Place. And uh, Ontario Place is special in my heart because in many ways, Ontario is the water capital of the world. Uh, Ontario holds the Great Lakes, and we also have the world's largest lake, Lake Superior, the world's largest freshwater lake. So in many ways, our province in Canada, Ontario, is kind of at the world's epicenter of water, and Toronto is at our epicenter. In downtown Toronto, we have Ontario Place. And this is a kind of a special place where we think of a lot of, uh, as the ideal location for kind of the epicenter of, of water and water research. Uh, here's another shot of Woodbine Beach from our drone. And the idea here is we have this autonomous drone uh, that can fly around and, and check the water. And we have an autonomous boat uh, craft, watercraft, which also uh, uh, travels around. and. The idea is the autonomous boat moves around through the water to sense and meta-sense the water using the sequential wave and printing machine and other technologies with an overhead drone simultaneously imaging this. Uh, the pod can move around in various patterns. It can either do a raster scan order like this or it can move around in a, in a patterned way uh, through the open water. This is our craft, our autonomous watercraft, and it's a catamaran of sorts, uh, but it has the propellers above the water so that it doesn't disturb the water. We put the propellers over in the air so that the propellers don't create stir or disturbance in the very water that we are trying to measure and sense. Uh, here is the making process, 3D printing of the pieces which are assembled. This is a test tank. This is my uh, virtual reality float tank that we use. This is actually probably the world's first VR float tank that we're now using as a little test tank for this um, vessel. Here's the vessel on location with the overhead drone. In this photograph you can see the drone above and you can see the vessel down below and it is pulling behind it the sensor pod which can either be towed by a swimmer as we showed in our past the paper we just presented, part one, or in part two here, we're uh, towing it with this autonomous craft. Here it is again from the side view. The autonomous craft is moving from right to left and pulling behind it this sensor pod, which is in a waterproof enclosure with the sequential wave and printing machine on top. So it's actually visible from the air from the drone. Here is the sequential wave and printing machine, the swim module, uh, which you saw earlier in part one. Let me just turn off my indicators there so that you can see a little bit more the screen. In part one, we saw the sequential wave and printing machine. And here it is. And what it does is it just 
displays phenomenology, uh, water-based phenomenology, for example. And this is the swim. This is a photograph of the swim. And you can see the waveform presented on it there. The overhead drone has a GPS module. Its position is known through global positioning. And uh, overhead, and then the uh, vessel underneath in view has uh, shown here the apparatus that's being towed behind it with all of the sensors for temperature, water temperature, water turbidity, and various conductivity, and various other properties. Uh, here we have the test beach. You can see the vessel being towed along. Uh, you can see the pod being towed along behind the vessel. The vessel's uh, moving through the water here, and you can see in the long exposure photograph it's swimming out are making this, the, the phenomenology visible. This is a long exposure photograph at Ontario Place where the vessel is moving through throughout the water and measuring properties of the water and displaying these immediately in real time to be photographed by the overhead drone as well as well as by a camera on shore. And here is a list of references and you can learn more about our work through this list of references. And join us, please join us for Water HCI 2022, which will take place on March 30th at Ontario Place, waterhci.com. And uh, if you're local, uh, join us for our winter swim. Swim OP is our group swim at Ontario Place. And we're conducting water quality research in the lakes. And one of the most important things to protect the quality of the lake is to swim in it. This is what Mark Matson, an uh, environmental lawyer who founded Swim Drink Fish said. He said the best way to protect our drinking water is to swim in it. Because you see the fish have no rights. Uh, if there's just fish, you know, people are allowed to dump all kinds of garbage into the lake and it becomes a garbage pail. But when people use the lake for swimming, all of a sudden it becomes a human rights issue. And in this way, it's very important to have a group of swimmers and in fact we should all encourage everybody to swim in the lake and uh, with the no swimming signs and everything uh, that officials try to put up in some sense this is just uh, an attack I guess on the environmental condition of the lake in, in, a, in a sort of way. So what we do here is very important research on water quality, testing, sensing and meta-sensing. And also it's a lot of fun. Thank you.